Some profilers are like elephants in a china shop. They are heavy and disruptive. A sync profiler is a ninja. It is small, silent and incredibly effective. Join me as we profile a Java application with a sync profiler both locally and in containers. What is a sync profiler? A sync profiler is a low overhead open source profiler for hotspot JVM based applications. It is really small and without a graphic user interface. So, it can be embedded into other systems and its work is almost invisible to the application and has almost no effect on performance. But don't be misled by its miniature size, it's really powerful. A sync profiler can collect data on various JVM events, CPU usage, heap allocation methods and so on. But how does it differ from other open source profilers? Well, it can monitor non-Java threads, native calls and kernel functions. And you know what? You don't need elaborate setup to use this profiler. Just one command to attach it to the application and that's it. You will get profiling data as a JFR file or a flame graph. Of course, there are a couple of additional steps to use it with containers, but don't worry. You'll get a grip on it really quick, especially after I show you how to work with this tool. Setting up a sync profiler. A sync profiler is uh, available for macOS and Linux. You can get the necessary package on GitHub. Luckily, I'm using macOS, so I get this build. After you unpack the archive, you will see that there are two directories. Bean contains a prof that attaches and controls the agent to the running Java process. And lib contains the profiler library that can be attached to the application as a Java agent. Profiling a Java application locally Right, so let's first look at how we can attach to the running Java process. Start any Java application, I'm using a reference uh, Spring Boot tab at Clinic. We need a PID of the process, and uh, the easiest way is to use JPS. So here it is, and uh, instead of PID, you can use uh, the name of the application. So you can simply use asprof to start and stop the application, right? So you can say uh, asprof start and PID or the name of the application. And then after you are done, uh, or after some period of time, you can say uh, asprof uh, stop. And PID. But of course, uh, there are additional options to configure the profiling session. So let's delete that. Right, so again, as prof, and uh, you can set the event with the flag E, for instance, let's profile CPU. Uh, you can set the duration with the D, let's set it to 30 seconds. And you can also specify the name and the extension of the file with F. So let's call it profile.html. HTML means that we will get. Uh, a flame graph. But uh, of course, if you want a JFR file, the extension will be uh, JFR. There are lots of other options for the profiler, right? So you can find them in the documentation, right? So there's start, stop, and then resume, dump, and so on. Other options for any format, HTML or JFR, right? And then there are options only for uh, JFR files, and there are options only for flame graph files. You can uh, profile several events, but in this case, you can get only the JFR file. All right, so the profiling has started. Let's just push some buttons while we wait, so it's not to just stare into the screen. Right, so the profiling is done, and uh, you can now open the file in the browser, right? So that's our flame graph. That's the color-coded representation of all the samples that profiler took. And of course, you can inspect each call in more detail. You can also attach a sync profiler at application start, and the profiling will start at once, right, with the application. And this way you can get valuable information about uh, application behavior when it starts. So for that purpose we need to attach a sync profiler as a Java agent, right? And we remember that in the lib folder we have this agent, libasync profiler, dlib in case of macOS and so in case of Linux if you use Linux. So let's copy the full path to the agent, right? And now we need to attach this agent and we are going to use the jar file. I have already prepared one, right? So Java agent path that's 
the option that we need and then here you specify the full path to the agent then you say start and here you can also specify various options like event so again let's uh, specify CPU. Uh, you can uh, uh, specify the file, right? So it's going to be, again, profile.html. You can, of course, use other options, but uh, for the demonstration, that's uh, that's enough. And then next, we say jar and uh, point to our jar file, right, which is in the target folder. And that's basically it. So when you start the jar file, the profiling will start. Here it is, right? So you can see that profiling has started. Okay, so and then you can stop the application and the file will be in the project directory. You can experiment with profiling modes and settings later on your own. And we are moving to containers. Profiling Java applications in containers. To profile an application with a async profiler from a container, you need to include it into the image. And uh, it is uh, really easy to do with uh, Alpakito Linux because you can simply install the async profiler package from Alpakito repository. We will need this Docker file. During the first stage, we specify the image that we are going to use as a builder. I'm using Liberica Runtime Container. It is based on Liberica JDK and Alpakito Linux, right? So first stage is uh, super obvious, right? So we uh, simply package our application into a jar file. And then on the second stage, we take library runtime container with JRE, right, because we don't need JDK. And here, the important thing is that we run apk add async profiler, right? So we are adding the async profiler package. And then you just specify the entry point, right? So again, we need to specify the absolute path to the agent to async profiler and the profiler will be in the opt folder right async profiler lib as you already saw right so there's lib and lib async profiler dot so right so as i said that's the extension for for linux and um, this uh, package also contains the asprof so we get both the agent and the tool that controls it and this is very useful, I'll show it to you later. Of course, you can specify the necessary options, right? So start, the profiler will start with the application, right? So let's specify the event and file, right? So it's going to be saved into the TMP folder of the container. And then you just run the jar file. Okay, so let's build the container. Great, so, but before we run the container image, we need to configure the Linux kernel to allow access to the performance event. And for that purpose, we need to set two options, right? So we need to set the perf event paranoid to 1 and kernel kptr restrict to 0, right? So you do sudo system control kernel perf event paranoid 1, and then the next option, again with sudo system control kernel kptr restrict to 0. I have already enabled these options, so I'm not going to do that, but you, you have to, right? So, and these options are available for Linux only, and um, they're not available for Mac. In case of containers, they are necessary, or else the profiling data won't be complete, right? So you might not even need them for, for Mac, right? Because we are profiling the containers, and there's Linux in containers, usually, right? Before we go any further, it's important to know that Docker containers restrict the access to the information on performance events. So you can use one or several of the following approaches. You can add the capability sysadmin to access the privileged information on performance events. You can disable the default secure computing mode profile. This profile disables some system calls. For that, you can use the security option unconfined. I'll show you that in a couple of seconds. You can use FD transfer flag together with uh, running the container as a privileged user. Lastly, you can fall back to CTimer profiling mode that doesn't require the access to perf events. 
Right, so taking into consideration what I said before, the command for running the container may look like this, right? So that's docker run, and then you specify the port, of course, right? Then you give the name to your container, or let's call it pat, and then I'm adding the capability sysadmin, and I'm setting secomp to unconfined. And I'm specifying the name of the container image. Right, so the profiling has started, success. And now, how do we get the profiling data? Well, the file profile.html will be created automatically in the TMP subdirectory when you stop the container. But what if we don't want to stop the container running in production? Well, in this case, you can stop uh, the profiling session manually. For that, let's use the shell of the container, right? So let's dig into the container, right? With a docker exec it, pat, the name of the container, and a sash. Okay, so we are inside the container. And I already said that we have installed the async profiler package, and it includes the uh, asprof tool. We can use it to stop the profiling session. We can also use it to resume it or dump the data without stopping the profiling. Right, let's find out the PID of the process, which we need to pass to the uh, asprof tool. Well, usually it's one, but just to be sure, right? Just for Sanji's sake. Okay, so it's one, yeah. And then let's use uh, asprof to dump the data into the file, right? So asprof dump, and let's specify the file, which is tmpprofile.html, and specify the PID. Okay, so that's it. And after that, let's exit the container, and now we can copy the file to the current directory by running docker cp, right? But first we need to find out the ID of uh, the container, so we can do that with uh, docker pca. Okay, so docker cp, now the container ID, and the file that we want to extract, right? So in our case it's uh, tmp profile.html, and we're extracting it into the current directory. Okay, well, success, that's our file. Great, so this approach can be used for interactive profiling as well. You can start the profiling session with uh, asprof, you can stop it, and uh, so on. It's really simple. What about build packs? Okay, you might be using build packs to build container images. And if you do, there are a couple of factors you need to consider if you want to profile this container image with the async profiler. First, async profiler requires the libstdc++ library to work. So when we used it in a container with Alpakita Linux, this package already contained this library and we didn't have to install it manually. But in the case of build packs, you can't simply install additional packages to the Linux that is used as a builder. And uh, Spring Boot 3.4 and later uses new builder. Builder Jammy Java Tiny. This builder doesn't include this library. And as a result, if you want to profile the application from the container, you should change the builder to Builder Jammy Base. So let's add additional configuration to our plugin, Spring Boot Maven plugin, okay, configuration, image, and here we specify the builder, Builder Jammy Base. Of course, the container is going to be bigger, but well, that's the necessary evil if you want to use uh, sim profiler with that. Then, build packs create a layered jar by default. And if there are additional files in the project that don't correspond to the standard layout, they will be discarded. But there is a solution. You can place async profiler into the resources directory. And this way it will get into the container image. We have downloaded the profiler for Linux. Okay, so let's rename it to something shorter, like profiler. And uh, yeah, so let's just place it into the resources directory. Okay, here it is. So that guarantees that the sync profiler will be in the image. And also we need to add the JVM option that specifies the path to the profiler. And in a layer jar, the files from the resources directory are located uh, under uh, workspace, uh, bootinf, and classes. Right? That's important to know because then uh, you have to be able to, to find the necessary package. Let's specify this path and um, the profiler options with a couple of additional flags. Right? So first, we need vp delim Java tools options. Right? So because we want to add additional JVM option, so it has to be delimited from other options with. Space. And now BP append Java to options. And here we're specifying the path to the agent, right? So with the familiar agent path, and the path is going to be, as I said, workspace, boot inf, 
classes, profiler, right? So because that's how we call our package, lib, okay? And uh, lib async profiler so, and then you specify the options, necessary options, right? So start, event, and the file. All right, that's it. So now let's build the container image with the familiar command Spring Boot build image. In this case, we also need uh, two options, right? Um, two Linux kernel options, right? Perf event paranoid and kernel kptr restrict, right? So they are really necessary in this case. But we have already enabled them, right? So everything should be fine. Okay, so let's now start the container. You may, again, need to add the capability and uh, disable the default security profile to access privileged uh, preferent information, but otherwise the command is well, very familiar and let's just talk around p, right, capability, security profile, secomp unconfined, let's call the container pet, so don't worry, I removed the previous one, so there are going to be no errors, and we are specifying our image name. Okay, great, so the profiling has started, well, and now there is a catch. If you try to enter the container and use uh, as prof to stop the recording, you will get an error, permission denied, because you can't simply fiddle with the container, right? Because it runs as a non-root user and this setting can't be changed. So you have to stop the container and then start it again to get the file. Right, so you can just use Docker CP after that. Well, that's one way to go, but what if you really need to stop the profiling without stopping the container image? There is um, another way. You can actually profile the uh, container image from the host, and it is applicable both to the containers built with the Docker file and to the containers built with build packs. Well, that's another approach, and let me show it to you. Okay, so let's uh, remove unnecessary options and the uh, profiler package, right? So let's remove it. We don't need it anymore in this case. And let's remove the uh, appended options with the profiler path. Okay, so let's rebuild the container and you still need the jammy base image, right? So you can't get away with using tiny because again, we need this library, the stdc++, really need it. So unfortunately, even in this case, if you want to profile from the host, you need to use another builder. Okay, and to profile a Docker container from the host, the container must be able to access the profiler by the same absolute path as on the host. And so you need to specify this path and start the container with the V flag docker run v and here is the absolute path on my server to the profiler and then the same thing right so absolute path to the profiler and this is what we attach to the container right so the container is going to be aware of the path to the profiler and let's run it in detached mode so as not to open another tab or window and specify the port the name of the container and again the system admin capability okay now we can profile the container from the host. So we can start the profiling session with the asprof, with the sudo, and then you're specifying the path to the asprof and necessary options. But first, let's find out the PID of our container, right? So docker top path. And uh, now you can say sudo, specify the path to the asprof, set the necessary options, right? So in this case, again, event CPU, for instance, duration 15 seconds. That's really not important right now, right? And the name of uh, the file. It's going to be tmp profile.html and the PID. Okay, the profiling has started. Great, in and the uh, the file will be saved to the TMP subdirectory of the container, right? So it's not going to be saved on the host. You have to understand that. And uh, we need to use Docker CP to extract the file. And now let's run docker psa to find out the ID of the container. And now we can uh, use docker cp, docker cp ID of the container, and specify the file that we need. Great. Here it is. Here it is, our file. Well, that's essentially how you can use a sync profiler. A sync profiler is a small, powerful, and easy to use Java profiler. Try it with your application. The copy and paste examples of uh, the code that I showed today are in the articles provided in the description. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel and until next time!